Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeCharis, CPA extraordinaire, coming to you live from downtown Bethpage, Long Island, New York, for another amazing episode of How to Win at Business. And tonight, another one of my favorite subjects, folks. We're going to be talking about the, the IRS and what we call the Taxpayer's Bill of Rights. And, and very few people know that this even exists, uh, but after tonight, I'm hoping to make more people know that it exists, if that makes sense. So let's just go through this. And, and before we get started, uh, if you're watching live, give me a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay. You know, I haven't been around uh, for a while. Part of it is because it's it's August and it's been nice out and, and I'm not in front of the computer as much any, you know, for a much needed rest. And I, I'm sure a lot of other people are, are out there. And also I've been moving, I've been moving uh, from Flushing, New York to back to Long Island to be closer to my kids and my three grandchildren. So that that's my story. I'm sticking with it. That's a fact. Also, I want to invite you to our amazing mastermind. Let me see if I could find that banner. And it's just mastermind with joedechara.com. We meet every Saturday. We play Japardi. We have training. We do all kinds of fun stuff. We laugh. We network. And most of all, we, we grow. We learn about business and, 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 and life in general. And we make friends and, and it, and it's fun. Also, if you want to connect with me, just go to timewithjoe.com. I love talking about business. If, if you have a tax problem, I'm pretty good at, at solving any kind of tax problem. I don't think I've come across one that I haven't been able to uh, at least explain and, and try to fix. You can't fix everything. But that that's one of my superpowers is to battle with the IRS. And, and sometimes you don't have to battle with them. You know, sometimes there's a, a book called or a philosophy called The Art of War. And, you know, sometimes it, it takes the right strategy. So let, let's go through this taxpayer bill of rights. And I think what we're going to do tonight, because I like to keep these short and sweet, is, is just go through the, the, the bill of rights and... and and then we're going to come back. I'm going to make this like into a mini series and, and go into detail about these. So the first one is the right to be informed. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to throw in some, some real life stories here because during COVID, I've had a rash, a, a, a lot. Well, I can't say a lot, but more than normal. Uh, taxpayers, clients that were not informed. They And part of that could be blamed on the IRS. Part of it could be the post office. But the bottom line is, you know, that is, that's your right to be informed, to be informed that, you know, you're being audited, that whatever, that there's a tax lien against you. I've had clients get you know, there's supposed to be three or four steps before you get uh, a notice of intent to levy, which means they're going to, you know, take the money right out of your bank account. Well, if you didn't get, you know, the first two letters, how how were you informed? You know, so they got to do a better job at this. I don't care if it's through email, through whatever. Uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm pushing or advising people is to get your transcripts, get your transcripts off the IRS. Go, there's ways to do it. If, if you want me to walk you through it, I will walk you through it. Maybe we'll, we'll do a training on that. Uh, now, th this is, okay, you have a right to quality service. Define quality, okay, because I've had some bizarre encounters and and not to put irs for the most part the irs employees are professional they're good they're courteous and it's not their fault that they have a bad employer <laughs> but <laughs> some of these people what, what they're doing is they're throwing people out there with hardly any experience without any access to 
the real tax data, no ability to, to solve problems other than to just, you know, say, hey, we answered your, your phone call. So they, they got to work on number two. The right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax. Now, this is a, a weapon. This is, you know, the right amount of tax a lot of times comes down to people's opinion and the way that the information is, is, is laid out. And, and that's what people don't realize. People get audited because uh, a, a number of reasons, but most of the time it's because they haven't laid out the right picture because they don't have the right documentation. Documentation tells the story of your business. So, the way to prove that you've paid the correct amount of tax is to be prepared. So if the IRS says, hey, you, you, you paid the wrong amount, I would go to my bill of rights and say, well, here's my proof. It's my right to determine the correct tax. Now, if you don't like the amount of auto deductions I took, or you're saying that, that, uh, CPE credit course that I took in Hawaii wasn't really business. Well, that that's a matter of opinion, and and we can we can discuss that. We'll, we can even go to tax court over something like that because that's just ordinary and necessary in my business because I need to sit, take CPE credits. Who are you to tell me where, when, and how? If I want to take my CPE credits in Hawaii and I have no other business there, well, then it's a business deduction. And that goes into right number four. We can challenge the IRS. A lot of people are afraid. They're like, oh, no, this, they, they hit me with a bill. No, that's just a start. That's where people like me come in. <laughs> Again, the right to appeal. Now, there, there's a couple of safeguards in here. The right to appeal, they have the what they call the taxpayer advocate, which is supposed to be an independent agency that polices the... Well, they don't police. They just double check the IRS isn't doing some of the stuff that I caught them doing, like bullying taxpayers, you know, making them think that they owed a lot of money when they didn't, taking positions that made no sense at all. Uh, and then the last but not least uh, avenue is tax court. Now, in my, in my career, I've filed plenty of petitions with the tax court. I don't even know if I could right now because the rules have changed. I haven't done it in a while, but I, I know people that can. So what happens is if you lose an audit and you're not happy, if you think that you have uh, the right position, the last step is to go to the tax court. Now, if you think about this, it's like the IRS is legit, uh, under the administrative, the judiciary is a different branch of government, and they're going to hold the IRS to a high standard when it comes to proving whether or not something is a business deduction or whether or not it was it was income. So they don't they don't like going to court. So what happens is when you file a petition, they call you in and you talk to somebody at the head of the audit department and they, their, their job is to cut a deal unless you have something that's so off the wall and so fraudulent or wrong <laughs> that they don't mind going to court. Okay. The right to finality. So when, when your, when your case is closed, when the statute of limitations is over, you can put that, you can put that year to rest the right to privacy. Okay, very, very important. Even I, I can tell you as a tax professional, we have a secure private server that's encrypted. And it's not just the IRS that has to protect your privacy. That, that being said, I could tell you without a, a shadow of a doubt that the IRS gets hacked. They probably get hacked all the time. I got a feeling they got hacked during COVID or before COVID. 
uh, some of the things that happen with their computer program just doesn't make any sense. And, and that's a fact. Uh, the right to confidentiality. So, you know, these seven and eight, I, I believe that they have done a very, very good job. I don't know of any cases where like uh, somebody's uh, identity was breached because they, uh, because some IRS agent, you know, stalled their stuff. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen because when you have 80, over 80,000 employees, somebody's going to, you know, have some issues. Uh, number nine is something that, that I've just encountered the right to re retain representation. So now I've had two cases this year where the IRS literally bullied uh, my clients. They weren't my clients before they got audited. They found me. Uh, and in both cases, the IRS agent, not one time did they ask my client if they had a representative. And in both cases, the, the agent made an, uh, an arbitrary finding. They said, oh, these, these expenses weren't business related. <laughs> and, and they were obviously business related. We're talking about uh, truck repairs, W-2 wages to employees. I don't know who, uh, who, who sets up uh, a hobby and pays $250,000 to, to truck drivers. So the, the fact that she was never asked or told that they they can hire a professional uh, is, is wrong. Uh, and the right to a fair and just tax system, we don't have that. We don't have that because the 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 scales are tipped in in big businesses, wealthy people, because they have the money to take advantage of the tax system. It's as simple as that. It's way too complicated uh, because the IRS focuses a lot of their time. In, yeah, they focus a lot on, on not-for-profits because there's a lot of fraud in that. That's not my area. That's a whole different uh, type, of, type of issue. Uh, and those not-for-profits need, need to be... Uh, held accountable because it, it's in the public interest. But when, when it comes to starting, running, and managing a small business, it's not fair. It's totally not fair. The, there's too much of, a, of an unfair burden on, on small, small business owners, particularly new business owners, solopreneurs, with the amount of paperwork then compliance issues that they are required to follow. I think there has to be some kind of cutoff point where they have like, you know, they had, they came out with the 1040 EZ a long time ago. They said, listen, if you just have a W2, let's just, just do it this way. You don't have to fill out the, th we need something like that for solopreneurs, for sole proprietors. Okay. Where it's easy for them to become an S corp. They know about the, the, the benefits. The, there should be a payroll system that the, that the government offers for free because it costs, it costs a, a single shareholder at least $50 a month just to run payroll. That's $600 a year. So why, why can't the IRS and the state, uh, actually they do have that. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Okay. I think I'm going to call it uh, a night. They do have that. Every, the, the IRS and the state, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of work uh, to do. File your W-2, your 941s, the state, uh, just to do it through uh, the state and, and federal websites. Now, if you're, if you're capable, then, then do it. Most people aren't because they just don't know what forms have to be filed, when they have to be filed, when the taxes have to be paid. So, it, you know, it is what it is. So the government, they did try to, to you know, make it free. My bad. Uh, but that's it. 
So you, you have the taxpayer bill of rights. And I think tomorrow we'll start going deep dive into some of these and we'll, we'll see how you can win big at business by not being put out of business by the IRS. Thank you. Let's go here. Okay, Joe DeCharo, once again, if you want to mastermind with us, come to mastermindwithjoedechara.com. If you want to connect with me, if you have any issues with the IRS, uh, like, like most people do, I would love to connect with you if you have a tax issue. And also, go to, go to our website, bedrockbusinessbuilders.com. We have a free webinar coming up August 24th on how to get government grants, crowdfunding, set up not-for-profits. It, it's pretty exciting. It's a new uh, topic for me, but we have a team that's unbelievable at it, and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope I see you there. Thank you. God bless. Over and out.